Our topic for today is biochemistry, and we're going to be continuing that topic for this series of videos. And our focus for today is talking about chemical reactions. Chemical reactions are where we form bonds between elements. Um, sometimes that requires us to break bonds between certain atoms in order to reform them. And so the two parts of a chemical reaction are the reactants. And those are the things that are going to be changed during the reaction. And then the products are going to be produced or that's going to be the outcome of the reaction. So here we have an example of oxygen and hydrogen. And those are going to break apart from their uh, diatomic forms. And they're going to form water on this side. Um, and you can see each oxygen is still present. So we have two oxygen on this side. We have two oxygen over here. We have four hydrogen on this side and four hydrogen on this side. Um, that's very important with chemical reactions because we don't really destroy or create anything. We're just rearranging in chemical reactions. So what I want you to do is copy down this equation um, and I want you to identify the reactants and products. And I'm going to give you just a little bit of time. So if you need more time, make sure to pause the video here. Okay, so this chemical reaction is in its equation form. And the way we know that is because it has an arrow sign indicating um, the direction of the reaction. And we have our reactants on this side, so carbon dioxide and water, and they are reforming into glucose and oxygen on this side. So our reactants are over here, our products are over here. And um, in the future, you'll probably have to balance these, but we're not going to worry about this at this time. But I do want you to be familiar with the uh, way that chemical reaction equations are written. So we separate the reactants with a plus sign. We have the arrow indicating the direction of the reaction. And then individual products are separated by a plus sign as well. So you kind of know that this is a reactant and this is a reactant. This is a product and this is a product. So when we're talking about chemical reactions, we need to get them started. And all chemical reactions require some amount of energy to get them to start. And that energy is called activation energy. And this is a um, analogy for what activation is kind of like. So we have a guy here and he's pushing this rock up the hill. And when it gets to the top of the hill, it's gonna roll down on its own. And that's what activation energy is all about. We're going to put that energy into the reactants. And once it gets to a tipping point, the reactants will react on their own. So there are two types of chemical reactions. There are exothermic reactions and there are endothermic reactions. Exothermic reactions, a good way to remember what those are is where the energy is exiting the reaction. So it releases more energy than it absorbs, and the products will have less energy stored in their bonds than the reactants did. Endothermic, how I like to remember this one, is that the energy is entering the reaction. So you have an endothermic reaction where it absorbs more energy than it releases, and the products will have more energy stored in their bonds than the reactants. And we can actually graph chemical reactions based on this pattern. And this is kind of what that looks like. So here we have the exothermic reaction. We have our reactants at a specific energy level. And then we're going to have to add energy, and that energy is the activation energy. And when it gets to a certain point, it's going to react and it's going to drop. So this is the energy that it's going to release. And this is the energy that is the net release of energy. Um, and then the products are down here at a lower energy level. 
With endothermic, we have the same progression. We have the reactants at a specific energy level. We have activation energy, but you can see the activation energy for an endothermic reaction is so much greater than what we saw with the exothermic reaction because we are storing much of this energy in the products. So we're putting in a lot of energy here. And that's where that entering idea comes in, that we're putting in so much energy. And so you can see there is energy given off in an endothermic reaction, but most of the energy is stored. And if you look, there's some energy put into the system on the exothermic side, but a lot of it is given off. All chemical reactions will absorb energy and release energy. It's what they're doing more that is what determines the type of reaction they are. So activation energy is really important to getting chemical reactions to begin, but oftentimes that activation energy is a barrier to getting the chemical reaction to start. So in order to get things to the point of reacting sooner, we add a catalyst. The catalyst lowers the activation energy for that reaction. A lot of times you'll hear the definition of a catalyst be that it makes um, the reaction go faster. The problem with that, and if you look at this graph where I have time here, the reaction time is the same. That's not really going to change, but what we do get to is the point where they can react and we get to that part sooner. It makes it easier for them to react. That's what a catalyst really does. It doesn't make it go faster overall, we just get to the point where it will react a little bit easier. And in biology, the most common form of catalysts that we see are enzymes. And I have a YouTube link here and I will link it in the description on the YouTube channel side. Um, it is definitely worth a watch for enzymes. Um, and um, that is where we will leave off with our biochemistry topics for today.